So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here at the ICOM Foundation webinar. Uh, I'm your host here, uh, Daniel. I'm a manufacturing application specialist. I'm also joined here by my colleague, Alex. Hi guys. Uh, he will be the one driving most of the presentation. Um, so I, hopefully everyone here uh, will get connected and let me just show you a quick thing. So we'll be having a Q&A session at the end. So please uh, try to either keep your questions to the end of the presentation or if you do have questions and you're scared of forgetting about it, you can also pull up the Q&A section here and fire your questions away. Uh, we'll try to either answer them right away or um, we'll keep them, like I said, at the end for a short Q&A. Um, to get this toolbar um, up, you could just move your mouse inside the, the window or the Zoom window and you'll see the Q&A. You can just shoot your question and uh, we'll, like I said, we'll leave a couple of minutes at the end of the presentation uh, for a quick question and answer. Uh, but other than that, let's get this presentation started. Alex? Okay, so... Uh First of all, if you have not downloaded Foundation and not activated it, there's a, you would go on the website iCam.com. Uh, after a few seconds, you would have a pop-up that would uh, come up and bring the uh, get free uh, 60 free post. Uh, on clicking on that, you can then download iCam Foundation either for 32 bits or for 64 bits, uh, depending on what's your computer. And during the installation, you would have, uh, you would need to activate your license. So this is something that I just wanted to, uh, to show you. You would have this window that would pop up where you just click on start your trial. Once you have click on that, you click on activate your license. Activate online. So that way you will just fill out your uh, information, your name, your email, uh, company number. The phone is not necessary. It would be a uh, useful if we need to reach you, your country, and then click on register. And from there, your license is activated and you have your free trial of 90 days. So from there, you have downloaded Foundation, you have installed Foundation. The first thing you wanna do, you wanna open Quest and access your, uh, your free post. When you launch the software, this is what it's, it's gonna look like. You're gonna have three screen, uh, three window on the main uh, software window. On the left hand side, you have the database where you have the included uh, post uh, for foundation, either for mill and milling machine or lathe machine, and both in inches and millimeters depending on what's the unit you want to work on. So you have 30 posts for the milling machine, and you have 30 posts for the uh, lathe machines. So those are your 60 free posts and they are divided into depending on the units. On the top right hand side, you have the main window that if I open a post, you will have the questionnaire where it asks you questions about what's the settings on your post and you can just choose your answer. You have different tabs, you can, play, you can switch from one tab to another. At the bottom uh, right, you have the help window where every question you click on that, the question, uh, the information on that question will change and you can select your answer from there or you can see what's the different possible answers and what's the meaning of those answers. Then afterwards, when you generate your post uh, before posting, you will, if you have any errors, it will show up in the build section. If I'm searching, for example, I want every relation, uh, every information related to spindle. If I go control shift F, we bring up the finder and then I can just write down spindle and click on find and everything related to uh, spindle will show up here. And if I wanna go to what's my maximum RPM and just double click on the RPM and it's gonna bring up the question that I want to change. So you can, ease, uh, when you are not familiar with the questionnaire or when you have a specific question that you don't remember where it is, you can just bring up the finder, uh, you know, search some keywords that would uh, come in the question and then just jump straight up to that, uh, to that section right away. Then the final one is the diff tab. If I have two posts uh, open up, 
let's say I had the version two of that post open. So here I have the name of the post, the version of uh, foundation that's being used. This is foundation v23, so .q30. And then I have a semicolon and a number. This is the revision of my post. So I have revision two and revision one. And if I go control I, it's gonna bring up the diff window. And then in the diff screen, I have every, uh, uh, every comparison between the revision two on the left-hand side and revision one on the right-hand side. You will see by the uh, arrow pointing to the left or right. And if I wanna see only the, diff, the differences, I just right-click diff only. And then I can see, okay, well, at my custom macro, my first line, I have program ID and the one to save startup. So you, you can easily see what's the difference between two posts. So we have open uh, a post. Now let's start modifying. Uh, the post might not be uh, quickly uh, as what you uh, might not be as what you want uh, for your specific machine. So we'll go through the interface of what you have. In the general description, this is everything that would be related to your general information of your machine. Uh, you can have what's the, uh, the post name, uh, machine and control that's used, what kind of machine you're using. If you have access, since it is only supporting two and three axis, it will only ask you if you have a Z axis or not on that machine. Then give a, uh, some more information about the uh, manufacturer and who developed the post so you can talk to that person if you have related question to that. In the other, you have the units of your, uh, the units of your post. Uh, what's the G code for using absolute and incremental? Uh, you can get that information. And then another part here is the register where you have all the settings for the different register, linear axes, uh, G code, uh, etc. And the other one here is the G code and M code, how many G code and M code you have on a single line. Then you have the machine description where it's everything related to the physical machine. So linear axes, the own position, everything related to tool change, feed rate and spindle. Then we have the control description, which is everything related to control. So everything that is G code and a uh, specific behavior that will be controlled by the controller of the machine, uh, such as the linear interpolation, the circular interpolation, so G1, G2, G3, uh, the tool and uh, radius and fixture compensation, so G54, uh, G40, uh, G43, depending on what's the, uh, uh, depending on what's the controller you have. Then we have a specific section for the drilling cycles. So everything related to drilling cycles that are supported. If you have parameters for your cycle, what's the, uh, what's the settings you need to have for, uh, to output for your machine. And here you have all the G codes for the uh, different cycles that we do support. Then we start really with the optimization of the post with the, fine, uh, the final tweaking of the post to make sure that everything is okay. We have some uh, optional uh, words like coolant where we have everything related to coolant. So what kind of uh, coolant my machine is supporting? Uh, only flood, do I have coolant true? Uh, what's the specific G code? Or if I have even auxiliary function like uh, hair blast on machine or do I have a, uh, a coolant uh, on the table to really flush the uh, the chips out of the out of the table. Where you could go in the auxiliary and coolant device, enter what word you would like to use to activate that command, and what's the specific M code or G code used for that. And then we have the customization, where it's everything related to macro. This one uh, we will go shortly. Uh, over it, uh, you have the first section, the start and shutdown procedure where you have some already built in macros for you. So you don't need to go really in depth with the macro programming. We have some already made functions that you can just choose them, 
put them in your post and it's gonna it's gonna change the behavior uh, of the post so you have everything related to the machine startup and shut down everything related to tool change when you have a cycle when your machine is moving or when you have a, a new operation so if we go in the tool change startup for example, you might want to stop the coolant and the spindle to make sure you output the code because your controller is not supporting that by default. So you need to stop it manually. So you could just choose from the list and just say, well, I want to add something. Uh, I want to stop the coolant. Okay, it's already active, but you just click on it, click on add, and it's there. Then you can just remove it by clicking delete or on clicking on the X uh, button. So the, now that we see what we can do, let's do some actual modification. I would say one of the first modification I would do to the post is in the registers, I'm gonna use the default resolution. Uh, the reason why we do, uh, we do that is that if you do not click on this one, you will need, and you do some modification to the register format, uh, you will still need to go in your linear axes or the different sections that are uh, related to that register to have it change. Instead of clicking that, it will follow whatever the format you have in your descriptor and uh, in your descriptor and the precision. So click on that, and I click on OK, and it's uh, it's done. Next, and the next thing that normally people would like to have is to have some travel check on the. Uh, uh, on your different uh, axes. So if you move further than what you, your machine can do, the post will let you know, and you can just uh, straight up go back to your CAM system, modify your tool pad to make sure that it's not, uh, you're, not, uh, you're not going in over travel. And then from there, you can post again. So if you know, if you have a uh, fixed uh, work offset, it's always at the same place and you know how much you can travel to left and right, you can use the range. Since you know where the part will be in the machine, you can use the range, okay, I have a maximum uh, and a minimum that I can travel. Or if you do not know if you have a variable uh, work offset, depending on what's the job you have, you can just use the total and use the, tra uh, the travel. So let's say you have a 43, uh, 43 inch of travel in the x-axis and then I go to the y-axis and I have 36 and for my z-axis I have 24. If I go over those value the post when we are posting will give me an error to tell me that the uh, I am going over travel. It will output the code but it will tell you your machine might over travel when you run it on machine. You can also change the maximum feed rate each and singular axes can go at and either for the feed rate or the rapid positioning you can change those then afterwards okay well my spindle right now if i go to spindle and then range data i have what's the maximum rpm uh, i have well my maximum rpm right now is at 30 well i might have a f uh, 15 r uh, thousand rpm uh, spindle so you can change that and if, the, uh, if you go over that uh, in your program, well, it, uh, the post will automatically output the maximum RPM if you're going over. Uh, this can be useful when you have one single program that you can run on different machine and has different capabilities. So you would program your part according to the uh, fastest machine and the post can adapt itself uh, to uh, to the machine you want to use at that point, uh, at that point. So we've done modification. Now let's let's test it out. We want to see what's the what's the code looks like. So you have two buttons you can click on. You have the runtime, which will bring the full interface of Genair, uh, where you'll see the macro, the actual macros it's going through and what's the result, or you can go and do a quick test object. The test object is really useful because you can choose, uh, you can uh, jump directly to the question in the questionnaire uh, 
compared to the genere, you need to go back in the questionnaire, do your modification, and then you have to rewind and just post again. So here I have my app source. This is coming from Katia, but we are supporting multiple CAM system uh, like MasterCam, PowerMail, NX, Hypermail. You can, uh, you can choose what's the CAM system you want to use. So here I'm going to use Katia, or you can use uh, you can leave it to no CAM interface kit, and it will detect automatically uh, which one you're using depending on what's the uh, what's the file extension. So here Katia, and then I just click on test, and it will run through. And now I have post uh, processing completed su uh, successfully. So there's no error, but I might want to do some tweaking. So uh, let's go and here. Oh, okay. I have a 3000 RPM uh, with an M3. Okay, let's say my machine is not supporting M3, it's M4 instead of, uh, of M3 on clockwise. So I can just right click on it, code spindle clockwise. And then if I close the window, uh, here. It is selected, so I can just say, okay, well, I want to change it to M4, and this one is the opposite, is M3. So if I test again, click on test, now every time I have a spindle, my M4 is already done. So you can quickly go through your, uh, your settings and just modify on the fly. So this is pre-made post uh, that you can modify. Maybe you want to create your own post and really choose your settings, uh, each and a single one of them. You have two ways of doing it. You have the wizards, uh, which is a little bit more restricted than the, uh, the second method, but it's more guided in terms that it, you have a specific set of questions that you need to answer and at the end it will create the post. So I can choose the name, so test, I can give it an ID if I wanna, if I have multiple uh, posts that has the same name, but I wanna have some way to differentiate them, I could give it a number or just an A and put my name. So uh, if somebody needs to modify it or ask question, he knows who to get to. Get to. Then afterwards, what kind of machine I have what kind of unit. So here we'll have a milling machine in inches. Click on next. Here, if you leave it to no default, it's gonna, it's gonna give you an empty post. So you will have to go through each and every question to make sure that you choose your settings. If you, do, if you wanna use a pre-made control, you just unclick no default and choose one of the uh, controller available to you here. For this example, we'll go with a Haas machine. And click on next. So, same thing for the machine. Uh, I want to use the kinematics for a three uh, vertical uh, uh, three axis mill. So click on BMC3, click on next. Then if I want to change my travel limits or my feed rate, I can go in there. And once I've done the modification, click on accept, next. Then we have some tabs with some uh, the most basic information concerning those uh, those features. So we'll uh, we won't in this webinar we won't go through them, but they are available to you uh, to modify. Then next, those are the RMDs that we saw in the post processor customization. And then at the end, you I want to generate the post. Uh, to be able to post, uh, you need to generate your post. Uh, else you won't uh, be able to uh, select it. And then I click on okay, and all the questions get populated. If they are not populated, the, uh, the pages will show as empty. The other way of creating a post is through new posts. So if you see those are not populated yet, so they show as empty. Here we have a different uh, interface. We see that we have a red the red text, this is what we call a stopper question. If you do not answer that question, you won't be able to proceed further. So here, let's go again with a mail. Then I have 
new questions that are available. So the questionnaire is also dyna uh, dynamic depending on what's the setting you choose. Some settings will activate new question or deactivate some, uh, some question that you won't be able to answer further. So here I'll go with my three axis mill since it's a, it's a mill and then in control, I might want a Fanuc. So you see also the controllers for the milling and the turn in the controller. So be careful to use the correct one. Uh, the M for mill and the T for, uh, for turn, you might also have L for uh, length and ST for, uh, for sir, uh, some turning uh, uh, controllers. Click on OK. And then afterwards, I can just generate my post. And it will go by default to the uh, first database, which is the default one. You can create a new database if you need to by going in database and then new database and where I can choose where exactly I want to put it, give it the name I want. And from there, it's going to show in the database section. So let's close those new posts that are not good for us. We'll go with the, uh, the post we modified for earlier. And then I'm going to show you the full interface when you want to generate your, uh, your actual NC code. So uh, let me just go to my screen. You have two ways of selecting your uh, of selecting your app source or your NCI file or CLS file, depending on what's the CAM software. You can either go and select it through the uh, dialog box, or you can just, if you have your file on hand, you can just drag and drop, and it's gonna put the uh, the link to there. And also, once you have to use a file you will also uh, have an history of the last few files you have to be able to remember. So if you are testing a program, you don't have to reselect it by uh, every, each and every time you're posting. It will remember the last one you use for, uh, for posting. If you need to select a specific CAM software, you have the CAM system. Here it will detect what's the, uh, what's the file extension and choose the kit accordingly or you can just select your specific kit. And if you want to create a uh, custom kit, straight, uh, mainly for you, uh, that will be available to each and every post, at that point, uh, you can create your kit, which is using the same language as the macro programming inside of the post, and then you would be able to select that one. Same as the CL file, it will remember the last kit you have selected, which you can see here under CAM system, currently using CATIA interface kit. And then here we are running from memory, so it will always use the latest version of your post available to you. And then right now I'm in full interface. If I click on OK, it will bring the interface up. So we're loading Janair, and then we have the interface. So here, by default, the first time you will launch it, this is how it's gonna look. So here in the input window, you'll see each and every single line of CL data that will come in in the post. Uh, in the output, what's the corresponding G code that's gonna, NC code that's gonna come out. And in the console, if you have any uh, warning messages, errors, uh, or just the job as finished, uh, you will see appearing in the console uh, window at the bottom. So if I click in the input, it's gonna process one line of the input. As you can see, when I do that, my post might be doing, the, uh, might be doing some more output than uh, one single line of input. I can also do the same thing in the output. If I click once, it will bring up one, uh, one output, one line of NC code and my process multiple uh, CL data at the same time. If I click on the console, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna process until the, uh, the next message is ready in the console. 
if you're doing that and there's no error that pops up here, we just have a straight up message. You need to click a second time to finish the process because here it's, uh, it's still saying it's a uh, paused. So I click uh, two more times. The first time will bring the, uh, the time it took to process the whole job. And then the, third, uh, the second time will just complete the job. We can also move those, uh, those windows around. So I can, I don't want my, have my output on the right hand side. I want to have it on the left hand side. So you can, it's modular. You can have it the way you want it to be. And depending on if you have multiple user on the same computer, you could go ahead and save your, uh, your layout. And if I go with my default layout, well, okay, I have this. And if I want to switch back to my second layout, then here you go. When you are debugging a post, what might be useful to have is the source window. The source window will show you what's the actual uh, CL data that's gonna be pro uh, processed. If you have macros, it will show you what's the available macro and it will ride along as you are process, uh, doing the post-processing. So you will see what's the, ma what's the macro you have. Also, what you can do is if I want to run to a specific place, I can put a breakpoint. So the post will run until I reach this, uh, this location on the CL data and stop from there. And then afterwards, you can uh, advance by uh, pressing F10 if you want to just process the, uh, the line without going inside of macros. Uh, F11 if you want to single step every macro every line of the macro you have, or F12 to just process the whole, uh, the whole CL uh, data line. The other feature you have is the synchronize uh, feature. So here I have this spindle uh, S254M04. I wanna know where exactly it's going. If I right click on it and click synchronize, going to tell me in the CL data where it's coming from and the input window it's uh, where it's coming from also so you can know exactly where in your software you're having issues uh, and then just go back to your cap system through your modification and everything is okay so for today this is all I had to show so we'll go with a five to ten minutes uh, Q&A if you have any question just Bring them up in the uh, in the Q and A section, and we will answer them as they uh, as they come up. Yes. So, just quickly, we can go with that. You can have uh, in the CL data. If I bring up the CL data, so this is the CL data. You have some information. For example, the tool name, uh, the hop name. The post is able to read that information, store it inside of variables, and then uh, straight up output them during the uh, either operation event uh, or during a tool change where you can have your uh, macro tool name, which is here we have the variable to, uh, P20 in the uh, startup where it will gather that information directly from the TL name, and then we will do a display with the tool name and you can customize the output of your post like that. Uh, by default, uh, Katia and uh, it does output the op name and TL name if you are choosing or PP table. Sorry, for uh, just to, uh, the question was, does Katia automatically, uh, by default, output the op name and TL name? Yes, it does if you are using our uh, post processor table uh, in your setting in Katia. So, uh, one of the questions, uh, this looks just like the regular campus. Uh, it is basically a three axis uh, version of Campo. So it's the exact same interface as or regular Campos, but specifically for uh, two axis lathe and three axis milling machine. Uh, 
Another question, can you support with one more, uh, one post more than one cap system? Yes, you can have your cap system, uh, your post to be built up to support more than one cap system. Uh, or you could have depending on how you feel comfortable, you could have multiple posts for uh, different cap system. It's really up to you. Just by changing the uh, cam interface kit, you are able to switch from one cam system and also do the integration to be able to support uh, the posting directly from inside that cam system uh, at the same time. And the last question, the license limit, what is available? Does it come with the license? Uh, you have your 90 days free, tri uh, free trial. Afterwards, it is a uh, pay per month uh, license that you can have, which is 50 US dollars per month for, uh, for the license. And the, can you upgrade later to multiple access system? Yes, at any point, if you want to use Campost, you, uh, you can purchase or Campost uh, version the complete software and every post you created in, uh, in foundation, you will be able to import in uh, campus and upgrade it to multi-access.